My name is Danforth Prince, and I'm the president of Blood Moon Productions. And I'm here on camera today in the home of my video videographer friend Peter to describe what's going on with the release that's upcoming of Darwin Porter's next work, next book. It's a biography of Merv Griffin. And it's a very unusual book, and I'm here just to say some things about it to the book buying and to the critical community, if any of them are watching this. Uh, Merv Griffin died in 2007. Um, this is the first attempt on anyone's part to write a compre comprehensive biography of Merv's life from cradle to grave. Um, no one has attempted this before. Actually, the subject has been fraught with a bit of um, neuroses, a bit of anxiety, actually, because there's great, um, great loyalty to Merv Griffin on the part of his fans. Um, Merv was instrumental in rewriting the rules of American television, and I think that this book goes a long way toward describing how Merv did that, and more importantly, the a big word here, the zeitgeist, <laughs> the spirit of the times in which he operated as one of the pioneers of American television. The book is loaded with anecdotes about Merv's many career changes. Merv began his hopes and dreams hoping to be a big band singer. Alas, he was a bit too late for that, probably 10 or 15 years later than the movement allowed. He had a philosophy always that I think is very smart for all of us to watch, which is turn the page, turn the page, turn the page. He had a Midas touch. There's many stories about Merv earning millions of dollars with writing a jingle alone. He was a genius at game shows. I think what this book does, though, that goes beyond the norm, norm of just the television career, which is elaborately explored, um, is his role as a gay man within Hollywood and within the TV world of the 50s, a closeted gay man. And the book is not in any way pointing fingers, of course, at Merv for this. It's almost, one almost ends the, the book with the, her, with the idea of the, his heroism at the lengths he went to to, to keep his name out of the press, um, to operate within the world of, of uh, media in the 1950s and not have his being gay become a, a household scandal. He did very well with it. Um, a word about the author. The author is Darwin Porter, who has written, um, I think, five or either six other celebrity biographies recently through, through me at Blood Moon. He's written a biography of Marlon Brando, um, Brando Unzipped, which was praised by the Sunday Times of London as one of the best showbiz novels of 2007. It was described as, and I'm quoting them, <laughs> lurid, raunchy, perceptive, worth reading, and one of the best biographies of the year. He's also explored Howard Hughes, Katharine Hepburn, Humphrey Bogart, and even Michael Jackson. But where Darwin has done a very good job with this book is to salvage the oral histories of underbelly Hollywood before they disappear forever. He's very clear about there being a double standard of, of, of journalism during the time he was doing his work as a reporter. He worked for the Miami Herald. He was a bureau chief in Key West, by the way. Um, there was a double standard about stories that could be recorded and stories that absolutely could not be recorded. And I think Darwin has taken the forefront um, among journalists working his contemporaries at the time in, at last, recording these anecdotes that were um, certainly history, but um, he documents them very carefully. Some of them are rather lurid, I'm afraid, but they are indeed <laughs> part of the Hollywood um, panoply and worth looking at. Uh, Darwin Porter met Merv in um, in, in 1958, when Darwin hired Merv to provide the entertainment for the, uh, for the senior prom at the University of Miami, um, Merv was paid, as arranged by Darwin, $500 to provide big band music. And again, this was 58, or maybe 59, sorry. He crooned away in an era just before Elvis broke onto the scene, and I think her, um, Merv's music was out of date about 10 minutes after he stopped singing at that particular senior prom. But he had some long talks with Darwin that night, and Darwin spent the next 30 years aggressively pursuing um, what was going on with Merv. So the book will be available in bookstores on um, probably around May 7th or May 10th. It's distributed by the National Book Network. Um, please look out for it, and thank you very much for your interest in uh, Blood Moon. Best wishes to you all.